Bhala sir, can we begin? Yes, ma'am. We can begin. On behalf of Science City, I warmly welcome you all to this webinar on the occasion of World DNA Day. Today, we have with us Dr. Sanjay Kumar. He is a director from CSIR Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology, IHPT, Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. As a guest speaker, this day is celebrated every year on 25th of April. It commemorates the day in 1953 when James Watson, Francis Crick, Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin and colleagues published a paper in the scientific journal Nature on the structure of the DNA. Also on this day in 2003, it was declared the successful completion of the Human Genome Project more than two, two years ahead of schedule. Every year from 2003 onwards, annual DNA Day celebration has been organized by the National Human Genome Research Institute, U.S., and from that, April 25th has been since declared as the World DNA Day Worldwide. Now I request uh, Dr. Nilima Jarrett, Direct, uh, Director General, Science City, to share her views on this occasion. Before that, I just read out her brief profile, please. Dr. Nilima Jarrett, she has done PhD in botany with specialization in environmental sciences. She is double gold medalist and a state awardee for her work in science and environment. She has undertaken certified courses in environment and sustainable development from International Center for Conservation Education, UK, Smithsonian Institute, USA, Uppsala University, Sweden. Widely traveled internationally, she has been invited as a, as a environment education expert by UNESCO, UNDP, and uh, United Nations University Institute of Advanced Study of Sustainability, Food and Agriculture Organization, and she has a 30 books to her credit. Prior to joining as a DG Science City, she was Executive Director, Punjab State Council for Science and Technology, and Founder Member Secretary of the State Biodiversity Board and State Innovation Council, and has been instrumental in establishing the Patent Information Center, Climate Change Knowledge Center, Invis Center, and Regional Center for Education on Sustainable Development. She is a member of several central and the state expert committees. Pushpa Gujral Science City uh, received the National Award for Science Communication in 2016 under her leadership. Now I request ma'am to please start. Please ma'am, share. Thank you, Dr. Bhalla. Thank you very much for the kind words. And a very, very good afternoon to everybody. Namaste, Satrikal, Jinayanu. Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, as just now, Dr. Bhalla has informed us that this day is actually a milestone in the history of life sciences. Because on this day, we the double helical structure of DNA was understood, was discussed, was, uh, and we got to know about this so much so. Um, just to keep it simple, I'll, I'll use mixed language today. Uh, so much so that hum DNA, RNA ki itni baatcheet itne aaram se karte hain aur jab se hume malum hai ki jab se ye COVID wala issue aaya hai RNA or DNA, तो मैं कहूँगी कि हर घर के शब्द बन गए हैं, हर बच्चे को, हर माता पिता को, हर एक को पता है what is DNA, what is RNA, या at least इतना तो पता है कि there is something called DNA and something called RNA, and that this DNA or this RNA can have a profound impact on our lives. Now, with the discovery of uh, the under um, with the dis with the understanding of DNA, we have also understood how genes work, how genes control the chemical processes in our body and in the bodies of all living things on this earth. How gene structure has led to the investigation of disease pathways and how the susceptibility of individuals to diseases 
डिपेंड्स ऑन अ पर्सन जीन मेरे को डायबिटीज हो सकता है आपको नहीं हो सकता तो हो सकता है उसमें डीएनए का कोई रोल हो ऐसे जेनेटिक डिजीजेस जितने बहुत सारे ऐसे जेनेटिक डिजीजेस हैं जिनके बारे में हमें अब पता लगा है जब से हमने डीएनए के स्ट्रक्चर को समझा है और जब से हमने आरएनए को समझा है अभी ये जो वैक्सीनेशन की बात हो रही है कोविड के दिनों में हम सबको पता है कि मॉडर्ना का जो वैक्सीनेशन है वो आरएनए बेस्ड वैक्सीनेशन है फाइजर का वैक्सीनेशन आरएनए बेस्ड वैक्सीनेशन है तो वो क्या होता है वो कैसे काम करता है ये छोटी छोटी चीजें आज हम कुछ कुछ समझेंगे जब हम डीएनए और आरएनए की बात करते हैं तो सिर्फ जेनेटिक डिसऑर्डर्स ही नहीं हम आइडेंटिफाई करते नई ड्रग्स बहुत सारे जितने परेशानियों बहुत सारी बीमारियों के लिए जो ड्रग्स डेवलप हो रही हैं वो कैसे फॉर्मुलेट की जा रही हैं वैक्सीन कैसे बन रहे हैं और फिर एक बहुत बड़ी चीज आप लोगों ने बच्चों ने खासकर आजकल सुनी होगी डीएनए फिंगर प्रिंटिंग नाउ डी एन ए फिंगर प्रिंटिंग हैज बिकम सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट that it is also used as a major evidence in court so there are so many things which scientists have been able to do uh, just because we now understand the structure of dna the structure of rna we we now know how proteins are made aap logo ne apni class mein padha hoga protein structure kaise banta hai so all those things as well as in plants also how dna and rna are impacting uh, our agriculture how how does it help the development of plants so to discuss about all this uh, i am extremely delighted to let you all know that we have got a, an excellent and a very eloquent speaker Dr Sanjay Kumar who is the director of the CSIR Institute of Himalayan Resource Bio Resource Technology located at Palampur uh, Dr Sanjay Kumar is uh, has primarily worked a lot on carbon fixation pathways to aajkal aap log climate change aur carbon fixation ki bhi baatein sunte ho तो उसके बारे में आई होप डॉक्टर संजय कुमार हमें कुछ बताएंगे और सबसे बड़ा जो इन ही इज क्रेडिटेड विद प्रमोटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप इन दिस एरिया सो आई वुड नॉट लाइक टू स्टे बिटवीन यू एंड द स्पीकर ऑफ टुडे डॉक्टर संजय कुमार आई वेरी हार्टली वेलकम यू आई एम डिलाइटेड दैट यू आर विद आस टुडे आई um i would also like to uh, welcome uh, mr j justin mohan mr mohan is the secretary of the national biodiversity authority and a very very hard task master i would say um, a very very hard working personality and i am really really delighted to see you here mr mohan thank you so very much for joining us and um before i invite dr sanjay kumar could i request you to say a few words mr mohan that would be really uh, kind uh, thank you this was not expected i was actually <laughs> attending as a as a participant only uh, but uh, actually i think in india i don't know whether any other webinar is being conducted on dna today i was telling my family also that uh, pushpa gujral science city has taken so much effort to organize uh, a webinar on such an important uh, uh, event today i am sure that all the participants would be immensely benefited out of this webinar i also know the speaker personally dr sanjay kumar is also our authority member so it is a double happiness that i know both of you <laughs> so anyway thanks a lot uh, madam for taking lot of effort i i, am, uh, I don't know how to share my happiness in fact pushpa gujral science city is organizing lot of uh, webinars on very very niche uh, topics actually which uh, no other uh, organization is uh, uh, organizing 
So I am sure that those who are interested in science, if they are following the website or Facebook page of uh, Pushpa Gujaral Science City, and uh, if they are attending such webinars, uh, it creates a lot of uh, awareness about the importance of science. And today, uh, because I myself, I am, uh, I am a student of biotechnology, so uh, I want to know what are the recent uh, uh, advances in DNA. And uh, it would be really great to hear that from Dr. Uh, Sanjay Kumar. Uh, I am uh, looking forward to hearing uh, for, from Dr. Sanjay Kumar. And I am uh, again thankful to Dr. Neelima Jarath for organizing this uh, webinar on a very, very wonderful uh, topic. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam, uh, for organizing this webinar. Over to you, Madam. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Bhalla to please uh, introduce the speaker of the day. Yes, Dr. Sanjay Kumar is director of uh, ISPT Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. Dr. Sanjay Kumar, he obtained his master's and PhD degree from G.B. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, Pantnagar, and Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. He joined CSR IHPT as scientist B in 1990. He received postdoctorate uh, degree uh, doctor training at Texas Tech University, USA, Rotham State Research, UK, and Kansas State University, USA. In research, his major contribution includes discovery of a novel carbon fixation pathway and its transplantation in a heterologous system to reduce photorespiratory losses, leading to photosynthetic gain and yield enhancement. Then discovery of autoclavable superoxide dismutase from high altitude plants, its characterization and modification plant adaptation mechanism at high altitude, cloning of genes for secondary metabolite synthesis and imparting stress tolerance, further understanding the mechanism of winter dormancy and drought stress in tree plants, enumerating molecular aspects of secondary metabolism in medicinal plants. Further, his significant contribu contributions on transcriptome and gene sequencing of Himalayan plants and development of butras using traditional Ayurvedic knowledge. He guided more than 25 MSc PhD students, hold several international patents, and has more than 160 such review articles, book chapters, and edited books, etc. Uh, recognition awards. He's a fellow of the National Academy of Science, India, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, and Crop Improvement Society of India. Conferred with prestigious Vasvik Industrial Research Award, R.D. Asana Lecture Award, Professor G.V. Joshi Memorial Lecture Award, then Professor Shri Ranjan Memorial Lecture Award, Ultra International Team Award for the contribution in essential oil industry. Outstanding Aluminous Award of College of Basic Sciences and Humanity by G.P. Pant University of Agriculture and Technology, Pantnagar. He got a Certificate of Merit in CSI Leadership Program and Young Scientist Award by Indian National Science Academy, Delhi. He has been chairman member of several professional communities and task forces and have several editorial boards of several international channels. I request, sir, to please start your presentation, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhalla, sir, for such an elaborate introduction. Not expected, but you gave such an elaborate introduction of mine. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Madam Nilima Jairadji. Indeed, a great pleasure meeting you. And nice to see Sri Justin Mohanji on, through this webinar. And I am seeing several students who are there uh, through this webinar. It, it is indeed a great pleasure interacting with all of them on this very, very important day. And that is the DNA day. We just call it as a DNA day. And uh, I'll start my presentation and I'd like to share my uh, small thing I thought I should share with, uh, you know, all my students, uh, you know, about this DNA, which is the molecule of the life. That's what I thought uh, the title I must give it. And I must, at the same time, you know, must appreciate uh, Pushpa Gujral Science City that, you know, they are so far reach, I mean, their thought process is so far ahead of several of organizations. 
I don't think several people thought of organizing such a day in India. Uh, I, I really hardly know anybody who's organizing this day. We know at least in IHBT we do something, but uh, once I received this invitation, I thought it is such an important day and uh, I should certainly be in touch with the students and discussing something, uh, you know, what the innovations happen in this important area and why it is important to know all of them, why this day is so important. So I'll try to touch some of the past issues and also the recent issues uh, and what in future we can do using this DNA technology. That's what uh, I thought. So I try to uh, trim my lecture accordingly. So uh, I think this is the day when we pay our tribute to Watson and Crick, uh, who really thought of such a simplistic model of such a complex phenomenon. And it's uh, only because of high thought process which has come up. So there are several hidden lessons for our young students also. So I would like to interact with them. I like to uh, start my presentation with this classical paper, which was published in 25th of April, 1953 in Nature. And uh, you can see on the right-hand side, a mouth-like structure, and that was the crystal structure of DNA that was published. And based on this structure, they had deduced. And if you see at the end of the paper, what they, they write, they say that it has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. Can you believe this? So copying mechanism of the genetic material means the information which is transmitted from parents to the, or one generation to the another generation, it is through DNA molecule. So in 1953, they came up with this fantastic idea. But let me tell you, and this is knowledge for the student also. It's not that in 1953, they suddenly got up and they, they saw this structure and they came up, they came up with such a you know, brilliant idea. It's not like that. Uh, you know, if you see their history, you know, I'm putting the figures of both of them. Unfortunately, Crick is no more with us. But Watson is certainly is still with us, uh, and um, uh, he wrote recently a very fantastic book. So all the students who are interested to understand, I will everybody, I'll recommend to everyone to re read the book by Watson and Crick. It's a fantastic, fantastic book. How they describe simplest phenomena and their complete life history in that book. How they discovered DNA and uh, so many things in between. Fantastic thing. And can you all believe the age at which they all did this discovery? Watson was only 23 years old and Crick was only 35 years old. And in 1951, actually, they had come, they came up with this idea and they, uh, you know, in one of the meetings, they described this idea at such a young age. And just after two, ye two years later, they published uh, this particular model of DNA. And uh, for this work, they received the Nobel Prize after nine years, that is in 1962. And uh, one of the person, Rosalind Franklin, who actually the person was behind this particular X-ray crystallograph, she had expired by this time. Otherwise, she would also have been partner in getting this Nobel Prize, I'm sure. Otherwise, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins, these are the three guys who had shared this Nobel Prize. And uh, I don't have to go in, you know, in detail that what is the distance between base pair, etc. I think students will take off their own. But more important thing for me to share with them the fun of getting a Nobel Prize. And students should know it. They should aspire if they are in science. Uh, today, this money is around 11 lakh US dollars. So more than 7 crore rupees, this amounts come to. So this is that's what Nobel Prize is all about. And if you see the function of Nobel Prize, how do they offer Nobel Prize to a person? This is the auditorium where they confer this Nobel Prize. So can you see this grand, fantastic scenario where Nobel Prize is given? And I think uh, uh, it's the uh, world's best and the most important and most prestigious thing. And now we understand why Watson and Crick received the Nobel Prize. They received that money and what we are seeing the implication today. 
and uh, that's what we all had to look for. When we talk of science, it has to be a top class science. It should have some meaning. It should not be a copycat science. We should do something top so that we all aspire to be somewhere near that 11 lakh US dollar. Here, money is not important. Here, important is they contribute much more than what they receive. That, that, that's more important. Now, let me give you some brief, you know, tomorrow in 1953, and that's the importance, you know, why you read so much before you become a scientist, why you have to read background information. See, in 1866, everybody is aware that it was the Mendel who was working on the peas. He said that, you know, there is something that characteristics are passed from generation to generation. In 1866, that is from there, the story of discovery of DNA starts. And working with simple things like P. And uh, I will not go into the detail that what was the advantage of working with the P's, but I think students should read themselves what was the advantage Mendel had when he had worked to, with the P's and what disadvantage he had if he had worked with some other things. So people, uh, particularly our student, they should read that particular area. And thereafter, three years later, it was Friedrich Mischer who identified the nuclein by isolating a molecule from a cell nucleus, and that later became known as DNA. So in 1869, you see, the molecule was identified. So the base or 1953 that we are telling, the base was laid long back. And it was a Swiss physician and biologist, this person. He was a medical doctor. And working with pus cells, he had identified this important molecule. And I will not go into the detail, but important thing for the students particularly to know that you see the sequence in 1881, in 1882, early 90s, 1902, 1944, 1950s, 1951. Continuously, there was work on the search of the structure of this important molecule. And it is the culmination and the accumulated knowledge that ultimately led to the structure, what we know as DNA. And uh, that's something. And once the structure of DNA was established, then you see the remarkable thing which started happening in the field of science. For example, moment the, in 1953, we solved the structure of DNA, and it was just based on some X-ray crystallography. Nobody had seen, uh, you know, just by that, that, you know, whether those base are attached or not, not attached, but they had come out with the, some idea. Then 24 years later, the sequencing was established. And the first genome was sequenced again. That was only 5 KB. KB means 5,000 base pairs first genome was sequenced and then whole thing started. And uh, can you believe that first bacterial genome, the, which was sequenced was hemophilus influenza that gives us a flu. That was the first uh, bacterial genome. And today what we are seeing, one of the variant of uh, uh, the COVID-19, what we are seeing, a later variant of that uh, same, little bit related to the same family. So while in 1977, this sequencing was invented and what you were seeing on the right hand side, I'm showing the sequencer machine also that is there in our lab. And thereafter in 2005, you know, there was a technology known as next generation sequencing. And in next generation sequencing, you know, the difference between normal sequencing and next generation sequencing in next generation sequencing. Here, you know, by Sanger sequencing, suppose you need to sequence, say, a 500 base pair, you would take at least 10 days or 20 days. And here you can sequence several giga bases. And you know, giga is means say, 10 to the power 12. So many bases at one go just in a week's time. So that's known as next generation sequencer. And that machine is uh, nowadays being deployed everywhere. What you are seeing, which is there in our lab also, this is third generation sequencing. Now you would wonder that once you have a structure of DNA, then we are doing this DNA sequencing. Now you have third generation uh, sequencing system. You are sequencing thousands and lakhs of base pairs. What are we going to do? And why we want to do? And uh, now let me give you one another development. 
when all these things were happening, then they said that we should sequence almost all the genome which is available on this earth. And first 10,000 plant genome sequence was launched. And later in 2018, Earth Bio Genome Project was launched. So can you believe such a large sequencing effort is going globally around the world? And uh, why everybody is wondering why it is happening? What we do? Uh, what is the relevance of this genome sequencing? Everybody is wondering. And if you see the relevance of this genome sequencing, and now it is more so relevant, is that if you have these genomes, then you can understand why some genes are getting expressed and they are making certain product. Therefore, something is red in color, something is green in color. In plants, for example, even in hen, some hen are of one color, another hen is of another color. So you know, you know why there is difference in the trait of the persons or the living being that you are seeing, number one then you can detect the diseases and genetic illnesses. For example, if somebody is having sickle cell anemia, then if your genome sequencing available with you, you know how to correct it or how you can modify it. You can develop personalized medicine and disease discovery is possible. And certainly, as Madam also mentioned in forensics, DNA fingerprinting, you know, that you take the DNA, you understand their various bases, and you, you do a lot of forensic science. In fact, uh, uh, there was a time when DNA was not accepted as a stable method to in the forensic sciences. And one of the lab of CSIR in Hyderabad, CCMB, their Dr. Lalji Singh, he was a pioneer in this area. And because of his effort, this DNA fingerprinting attained a legal position that if there is a dispute between parents and the um, their, you know, son or daughter, it can, that dispute can be settled based on the DNA fingerprint of the parents as well as of the child. If there is some death case, the DNA fingerprinting can be adopted. So what my message to all the students is that, you know, whatever science we are doing, it has a lot of applications to the society and uh, society accepts it provided it is a solid science. And here, what forensic I mentioned about our CCMB Hyderabad scenario, just DNA fingerprinting, and you must have listened, you know, so many cases, uh, you know, Bhatti ke, Tandoor case, this case, and all those problems were solved by this DNA fingerprinting. So that's the advantage of DNA fingerprinting. And now you can actually amplify DNA. And nowadays, all of you must be aware of this RT-PCR. Everybody says RT-PCR test hoga to aapki ko is state mein aane ko milega. Everybody is aware of this RT-PCR test. So what is this RT-PCR test? It's again one of the technology which is based on DNA. So in virus, this virus, for example, uh, I'm just talking of COVID virus because RT-PCR test nowadays has become so common. Everybody even Rishawala says ki RT-PCR karana hai whether he understands it or not. So this is one of the technology I thought, let me tell you, you know, I'm showing this RT-PCR machine here, what you are, what is, you know, on the right-hand side at the bottom, I'm shown one RT-PCR machine. So if you have very minute nanogram quantity or picogram quantity of a molecule, you can amplify it. And it is known as RT-PCR, because this virus is having, our COVID virus is having RNA. So from RNA, you convert them into cDNA. So this process is known as reverse transcription. And PCR means polymerase chain reaction. Polymerase means you make so many molecules, polymerase chain reaction. It is a chain reaction where you can amplify it, right? So you can do RT-PCR. So if you have a molecule, if you have a, uh, a small piece of DNA, a small quantity of DNA, you can amplify by PCR, that is known as polymerase reaction. If it is RNA, then the whole process is known as RT-PCR, right? So RT-PCR, can you now believe it, application of this DNA-based method? If Watson had not discovered the structure of DNA, in today's scenario, how one knows that somebody is asymptomatic? just based on RT-PCR. 
and RT-PCR detects the presence of nucleic acid. So that's the advantage of doing this uh, DNA structure analysis, right? Now, one more component I wanted to include here is of mutation. You know what happens? DNA is having four different bases. If we call them A, T, G, C, right? These are four different bases. They are like letters. Like for example, C, A, T, cat. If you replace C with B, it became B, A, T, bat. Whole meaning changes. And that's what mutation is. You replace one letter with another and the mutation and the meaning changes. And how it is reflected in our body. For example, if you have a black hen and there is a single mutation, it becomes white hen, right? Like CAT cat and BAT bat, just B to C and one becomes bat and one becomes cat. So similarly in DNA also, just a single base pair change can do a lot of variations. And that's what is happening. Now I'm just giving you some example that, you know, what is the advantage of this DNA sequencing? You know, first you had the structure of DNA, what Watson had discovered, then Sanger had discovered how the DNA can be sequenced. And then you know how the mutation can take place. Now you can see in our Indian mutation, particularly B.1.617, and we, this mutation is known as E484Q L452R. For example, this is the name of Indian mutation. And, and you know what is the um, phenotype or ye karta kya hai? Ye immune escape karta hai. Or infectivity bada jati hai. Aaj ke laap dekhne kitne jada cases ho hai. Right? To ye humare mutation ka kamal hai. Ab E484Q or L452R ka matlab kya hai? Let me just try to explain you. For example, this is our virus, COVID virus. E484Q ka matlab hai ki jab aap DNA sequence karte hai, ABCD likhte hai na, chase ABCD 26 tak hoti hai. Lekin aap bho sari likh sakte hai. To ek, do, teen, chaar, paan, chay, saat, aat. You can reach up to 484 position. Similarly, DNA may be AGCT basis hoti hai. Woh aap kai sari jage likh sakte hai. जब आप E484Q कहते हैं तो इसका मतलब है E का मतलब होता है ग्लूटामेट एक अमीनो एसिड का नाम होता है ग्लूटामेट और Q अमीनो एसिड का मतलब होता है ग्लूटामीन ये बायोलॉजी के कुछ कोड वर्ड्स हैं तो जब आप 484 पोजीशन में ग्लूटामेट से आप ग्लूटामीन बना देते हैं ये एक म्यूटेशन होता है एक ये हमारा म्यूटेशन हुआ है और दूसरा म्यूटेशन हुआ है 452 पोजीशन पे एट ए पोजीशन 452 वेयर यू convert L into R. L means leucine, that is one of the amino acid, and R means arginine, that is another amino acid, right? So you convert leucine into arginine, and this change takes place just by change of a single letter, like BAT bat and CAT cat, right? Where is bat and where is cat? Similarly, here also, you just change one single letter in the whole scenario, right? Uh, for example, AGA codes for arginine and AGC codes for serine. So just A to C change and amino acid is changed. And if amino acid is changed, whole phenotype is changed, right? So that is the thing what is happening in this virus. And let me tell you why this is happening. This is an RNA virus, right? You know, in nucleic acid, we have either RNA or we have DNA. DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. And RNA is replicated by an enzyme known as RNA polymerase. And DNA is replicated by an enzyme known as DLA polymerase. DNA polymerase has got proofreading activity. RNA polymerase does not have a proofreading activity. Proofreading activity means if there is some error, there is correction possible. But in this case, correction is not possible because there is RNA. And that is the reason you are why you are getting this trouble into this COVID-19 virus. And more the cases, more RNA replicates, more there will be mut mutation. And therefore, this virus is so, so dangerous. We should all understand that. Anyways, so this was something about, uh, you know, uh, some discovery on DNA, what are we doing with this DNA? And I'll give you now some solid examples. And also I will like, since students are involved, I would like that, you know, 
once you are into the science area there should be some some questions we should ask for example why does some phenomena happen right we should always ask for example once newton saw that apple falling he asked that why does it happen if he had not asked this question he would not have discovered the law of gravity your second question should be can i make it better earlier you were moving in bel gadi now you are moving in car so you are always doing some innovation can you make it better and what more can you do with some that's another question sometimes you already have something can you do so many innovations out of that for example once you have dna structure now you know so many things can be done with dna you can treat the diseases you can make the plant tolerant to particular conditions you can do dna fingerprinting so many things can be done your imagination has to be very very wide so students should certainly come with an open mind with a questioning mind and some of the basic questions i put it right and now what i thought it's by chance that justin mohanji is also here i thought i'll little bit take a, since students are there it should they should have, they should have some exposure to biodiversity also then how this using dna technology we make use of this biodiversity how we do value addition how we do bio prospecting i thought i'll just give you know a little tour to biodiversity and particularly himalayan biodiversity if you talk of himalayan biodiversity we all understand and uh, maybe it's a knowledge for the students also some of the students must be aware of that that uh, uh, you know himalayas are known as water tower of the world because you can see so much snow is there it leads to all your rivers ganges yamuna all these rivers come from these mountains they are the cradle of evolution of the plants as well as animals and if you see just plants for example you have more than 9000 flowering plant species approximately in this himalayan zone i'm just giving you one himalayan zone and in that around 33% are endemics which it means they have evolved in the that place they are native to that himalayan region and you find beautiful things when you come to himalayas all these are magnificent gla glaciers you pass through those glaciers you have a splendid mountain and i'll tell you why i'm showing you all that you have splendid mountains you have nice rivers flowing and then you have dense forest open meadows all these thing you will find and then we go to all these places you can see all our students are here they are going in different parts of the himalayas and it's fun you know it's a doing research is fun in himalayas so all the students who want to do research who want to take up science as their a career they go to the environment they go to the fields and they really and they would certainly enjoy i can only guarantee you and what you find in those places you find some beautiful plant like this one of the plant known as riam you know one of the species of riam and you know advantage of this plant it can create a greenhouse effect and blocks the uv radiation and you can think uh, can you uh, carry out from such substances which can actually block the uv radiation you can think this mechanism one can think of deploying somewhere else right just to give an example you see this pitcher plant you must be seeing you know you must have read in your book and you know what uh, people do using this pitcher plant they use to cure the cataract and the night blindness the juice of this uh, plant and you all are aware that this pitcher plant can kill the insect right so once you go to the environment you go to the nature you find fantastic thing it's a carnivorous plant you know it right now this is brahma kamal very precious plant you must have read about this plant and it is used to treat for example liver infections so once you go to the nature nature has several solutions this plant rolfia serpentina serp gandha they call it and uh, snake charmer they use a root to train their young ones and uh, probably it reduces the blood pressure and so the young ones uh, you know the their child children cannot be very reactive right so uh, now this plant acacia catechu which is in himachal and uh, it gives you katha just uh, to, to give some value like texas bacata in himachal it's used for treating of ovarian cancer for example it is a source of taxol uh, now similarly snowberry in high altitude it can treat the breathlessness caused by mountain climbing so these are some of our students they really enjoy going to the field they collect samples from various places they go to hide into the himalayas 
you know, these they enjoy, you know, they work and they enjoy. And let me tell you, after, after all this hard work and all this enjoyable work, you know, this glacier, they keep on collecting samples from the glacier. They go to the uh, water areas, they collect samples from there. They go to, you know, some places where cow dung is lying, they will collect samples from there. And what do they bring home? They bring some beautiful things like this, right? Some bacterial colonies, beautiful things they bring from those places. And then what do we do? Now I give you some practical examples. So uh, they go to the, those places. And here again, you see all our DNA technology, all that DNA structure that you studied, that is being utilized. How? When we feel cold, we wear, uh, you know, our jackets, we wear our sweater like this is small kid at the bottom of my slide, right? But what happens to the plant, you know? They are getting exposed to the frost. They have, nobody comes and cover them with the kambal and blanket and rajai. They tolerate, right? कुछ पौधे मर जाते हैं कुछ जिंदा रहते हैं और ये सोर्स होता है इन चीजों के ठीक है जो पौधे मर जाते हैं इसका मतलब उनके अंदर वो जींस नहीं है जो उस कंडीशन को टॉलरेट कर सके और जो पौधे जिंदा रहते हैं इसका मतलब उनके अंदर वो जींस हैं जींस का मतलब वो डीएनए का पीस है जो उसको जिंदा रखता है एक ही बात आप समझ लीजिए मोटी मोटी पौधे हैं हमें प्यास लगती है हम जाते हैं गिलास भर के पानी पी लेते हैं पौधा बेचारा कहां जाएगा उसको पानी दिया तो तो जिंदा रहेगा पानी नहीं दिया तो सूखना शुरू कर जाएगा आप देख रहे हैं कमले में पानी नहीं दिया तो बेचारा सूखना शुरू हो जाएगा कुछ पौधे ऐसे हैं जैसे आपने कीकर का पेड़ देखा होगा उसको पानी ना भी मिले वो फिर भी तैयार रहता है थोड़ा सा पानी मिले एकदम हरा हो जाता है यानी कुछ पौधों में ऐसी मैकेनिज्म होती है कुछ पौधों में ऐसी मैकेनिज्म नहीं होती है तो यहां पे आपकी डीएनए बेस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी बड़ी यूजफुल हो सकती है अब पौधे भी बड़े मजेदार होते हैं आपने बचपन में सुना होगा बोया पेड़ बबूल का आम कहां से खाए यानी आम में आम उगता है स्ट्रॉबेरी में स्ट्रॉबेरी उगती है गाजर में गाजर उगती है राइट व्हाइट हैपेंस ऑल दोस प्लांट मेक सर्टेन स्पेशल मेटाबोलाइट्स दे प्लांट दे हैव सर्टेन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फॉर एग्जांपल सम ऑफ द प्लांट हियर आई एम गिविंग यू वन एग्जांपल ऑफ रतनजोत दिस इज वन ऑफ द प्लांट ऑफ हाई एल्टीट्यूड व्हिच इज ऑलमोस्ट एक्सटिंक्ट earlier we used to go at those places we used to get lot of plant today we go there we hardly get even a one or two plant in an area of 2 10 km square area can you believe this and why it is happening because this plant has economic value aap dekhte hain tel mein log dalte hain baal tel aap sunte hain dabar ka sab mein ratan jodh ka istemal hota hai ratan jodh koi ugata nahi hai right so because of over exploitation no cultivation these plants are getting extinct और जस्टिन मोहन जी अपने एनबीए में बहुत परेशान रहते हैं इसीलिए कि भाई हमें अपनी बायोडायवर्सिटी को कंजर्व करके रखना चाहिए अगर हम अपनी बायोडायवर्सिटी को कंजर्व नहीं करेंगे तो आज हम इस हालत में पहुंच जाएंगे डाबर कंपनी अपना मुनाफा कमा रही है कल को पौधा नहीं है तो वो कहां से अपना बाल तेल बनाएगी आप सोचिए जरा इट इज ए सिंपल थिंग तो बच्चों को भी ये बात अभी से समझ में आनी चाहिए कि हम अपनी बायोडायवर्सिटी को कंजर्व रखें अब देखिए बायोडायवर्सिटी में यू हैव डिफरेंट रेट्स यू सिम सिम एवरी प्लांट कैन नॉट मेक एनीथिंग ईच प्लांट हैज गॉट स्पेसिफिक ट्रेट एंड देयरफॉर दे मेक स्पेसिफिक थिंग देयरफॉर मैंगो इज मैंगो स्ट्रॉबेरी इज स्ट्रॉबेरी रतनजोत और आर्नीबिया यूक्रोमा इज आर्नीबिया यूक्रोमा सो वी शुड ऑल अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड चिल्ड्रन शुड अंडरस्टैंड दिस लेसन फ्रॉम डे 0 दैट दे शुड ट्राई टू कंजर्व as much biodiversity as possible it is for their good otherwise we come to this stage that they become to the extinction now some of the modern technologies they can be very useful i'll give you some examples right for example uh, if you see the plants what you would like to do can you allow ability can you modulate the ability of the plant to grow under harsh environment you can improve the nutritional quality. For example, aap gehu khate hain. Aaj kal aap sunte honge gehu mein people have gluten intolerance. So can you have a wheat where there is less gluten? So like those changes you can do using DNA technologies. Can you enhance yield? Aaj kal itni abadi bada rahi hai. Productivity kam ho rahi hai. 
जमीन कम हो रही है सो यू नीड टू इंक्रीज यील्ड सो लाइक दिस देर आर सेवरल थिंग्स विच वी कैन डू विद द हेल्प ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी और टेक्नोलॉजी और डीएनए बेस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी now what do we do you know in dna based technology i am just giving one central dogma because students are there so i thought i should tell something which they are also familiar central dogma aap sabne suna hoga ki aapka dna se rna banta hai rna se protein banta hai ye protein se sare trait govern hote hain because protein mein enzyme hote hain inse sare trait govern hote hain ye aapki protein ko affect karta hai lipid ko affect karta hai sab cheezon ko affect karta hai यहाँ पे एक प्रोसेस होता है रिवर्स ट्रांसक्रिप्शन डीएनए और आरएनए के बीच में आरएनए से डीएनए भी बन सकता है जो आपके कोविड के अंदर होता है इस प्रोसेस को हम कहते हैं रिवर्स ट्रांसक्रिप्शन या आरटी जिसको आप कहते हैं आरटीपीसीआर के अंदर तो ये रिवर्स ट्रांसक्रिप्शन भी एक प्रोसेस होती है जिसमें आप आर से डीएनए को बना सकते हैं तो हम लोग जो बायोलॉजिस्ट हैं वो पूरे इस सेंट्रल डोगमा को डील करते हैं आप देखिए सेल के अंदर एक न्यूक्लियस होता है न्यूक्लियस में क्रोमोसोम होता है क्रोमोसोम के अंदर डीएनए होता है और डीएनए के अंदर जीन्स होते हैं और इस जीन्स को हम लोग यूज करते हैं अलग अलग कामों में छोटे छोटे टुकड़ों से काट के अब हम क्या करते हैं कि जब भी हमको कोई जीन चेंज करना होता है सो वी फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड द होल प्रोसेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी टेक द जीन वी पुट इट इन टू समीरिया वी क्लोन द जीन जीन uh, क्लोनिंग का मतलब क्या है कि वी टेक द जीन फ्रॉम वन सोर्स पुट इट इन बैक्टीरिया सो दैट इन बैक्टीरिया इट कैन एम्पलीफाई इट कैन मेक द सिमिलर कॉपीज इट इज नोन एज जीन क्लोनिंग देन वी कैन डू डिजाइनिंग ऑफ द जीन फॉर एग्जाम्पल हियर दीज आर ऑल ब्लू कलर सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू एड सम रेड कलर जीन इन बिटवीन यू कैन डू यू हैव मॉलिकुलर सीजर यू कैन डू दैट एंड देन यू कैन डू ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड यू कैन पुट दैम इन टू द प्लांट्स एंड आई गिव यू सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ right there are several methods how you can push the genes into the plant one is agrobacterium method and now we have gene guns also like you take the gene there is a gun you put it on the gold particle and you throw the gold particle with lot of speed you know we using this machine and it is known as gene gun so using this process you can really do transformation of the plants and like this you can get all the plants using tissue culture method you can push them into the things now i'll give you example what have we done by these things first i'll give you some example which you must have read or not read then you must know for example if you see traditional tomatoes what you get what happens is you know you cannot harvest ripe tomatoes jab bhi aap tomato todte hain kheton se अगर आप पका हुआ टमाटर तोड़ेंगे तो क्या होगा कि आपके घर तक आते आते सड़ जाएगा वो टमाटर की वैल्यू नहीं रहेगी तो आप क्या करते हैं टमाटर को कच्चा तोड़ते हैं फिर बीच में मार्केट वाले क्या करते हैं आपने आम में भी देखा होगा लोग बीच में इथिलीन डालते हैं उसको पकाने के लिए और वो आपके घर तक पहुंचता है तो आजकल आप देख रहे हैं आम आपके पास आता है पका हुआ होता है लेकिन उसमें स्वाद नहीं होता है ऐसे टमाटर में भी होता है वो पक तो जाता है देखने में लेकिन उसमें स्वाद नहीं होता तो साइंटिस्टों ने सोचा हम क्यों ना ऐसा टमाटर बनाएं जो पेड़ पे पक तो जाए लेकिन वो पेड़ पे सड़े ना उसको उन्होंने कहा फ्लेवर सेवर टोमेटो राइट तो उन्होंने एक जीन में मॉडिफाई किया तो वो टमाटर पेड़ पे पक जाता था लेकिन वो सड़ता नहीं था उन्होंने उसकी शेल्फ लाइफ बढ़ा दी थी तो जब वो आपके घर में टमाटर आता है तो उसमें खुशबू होती है टमाटर की टमाटर का स्वाद होता है और न्यूट्रिशन ज्यादा होती है तो देखिए ये बायोटेक्नोलॉजी का ये सही एग्जाम्पल है जो काम कर रहा है और जो मार्केट में अवेलेबल भी है यूएस वगैरह के मार्केट में जहां पे ट्रांसजेनिक परमिटेड है इंडिया में ट्रांसजेनिक अभी परमिटेड नहीं है इसीलिए ये टोमेटो यहाँ पे आपको नहीं मिलेंगे लेकिन यूएसए में आपको मिलेंगे लेकिन इंडिया में बीटी कॉटन है आपने सुना होगा सबने बीटी कॉटन के अंदर आपको पता होगा जो हमारा कॉटन है जो यह कपास है आप देख रहे हैं यहाँ पे ऊपर जो मैंने तस्वीर बनाई है इसके अंदर एक कीड़ा लग जाता है और कीड़ा लगने से क्या होता है कि पूरा पूरा कपास खराब हो जाता है तो हमने साइंटिस्टों ने क्या किया उन्होंने एक बीटी प्रोटीन लिया और उस बीटी प्रोटीन को इस कपास के अंदर डाला तो क्या हुआ कि जब भी अः और ये जो बीटी प्रोटीन क्या करता है किस्म का टॉक्सिन बनाता है जहर बनाता है जो कीड़े को मार देता है तो उस कपास में कीड़ा नहीं लगता और कीड़ा नहीं लगता तो आपको इंसेक्टिसाइड छिड़कने की जरूरत नहीं है तो देखिए ये सही एग्जाम्पल है और 
आप देख लें पंजाब में और कई एरिया में लोग इसको ग्रो भी कर रहे हैं बीटी कॉटन को उसी तरीके से एक राउंड अप रेडी एक जो है ना ग्लाइफो जो सोयाबीन जब हम ग्रो करते हैं उसके अंदर वीट की बहुत ज्यादा दिक्कत है खरपतवार की बहुत दिक्कत थी उस खरपतवार को मारने के लिए जब हम बीटी साइड छिड़कते थे तो क्या होता था कि हमारा सोयाबीन भी खराब हो जाता था तो सोयाबीन इसलिए खराब होता था क्योंकि जो खरपतवार मारने के लिए हम दवाई छिड़कते थे वो एक एंजाइम होता है ईपीएससी खास एंजाइम होता है उस एंजाइम को ये इनिबिट करता था जो इसका जो आपका हर्बिसाइड था तो इन्होंने ट्रांसजेनिक टेक्नोलॉजी से और बायोटेक्नोलॉजी से एक ऐसा एंजाइम बनाया जो कि उस हर्बिसाइड को टॉलरेट कर सकता था और उसकी वजह से जब उन्होंने वो जीन सोयाबीन में डाला तो सोयाजी बीन के ऊपर जब भी हम हरबी साइड छिड़कते थे वीट तो मर जाते थे लेकिन सोयाबीन के ऊपर प्रभाव नहीं पड़ता था सो जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू टेल यू दैट डीएनए टेक्नोलॉजी इज वेरी वेरी पावरफुल यू कैन चेंज द कलर्स ऑफ द फ्लावर फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूजिंग दिस टेक्नोलॉजी जस्ट बाई सिंगल जीन म्यूटेशन यू जस्ट नॉक डाउन ए सिंगल जीन एंड दिस पिंक फ्लावर बिकम्स व्हाइट एंड यू कैन मेक नाउ For example, nowadays you have tomato, which is uh, anthocyanin rich tomatoes are there because you have modulated the whole pathway. So those things are there. Now I'll give you some examples that you know how biotechnology or de- gene technology can conserve the biodiversity and benefit the industry. Because uh, as uh, Bhalla Sah was also telling that you know in the science city and one of the per- uh, one of the major agenda is that you know while people people learn science they also understand how the entrepreneurship can be developed so i thought i'll give some examples we are using this dna technology entrepreneurship has directly been evolved even in this country and here i am you giving you one example at the same time we are conserving our biodiversity this is one plant known as potentilla which grows in kunjam pass at 15000 feet in spiti valley and this plant is localized only in those zones right but this plant is something very peculiar you know this plant had given one enzyme what bhalla sahab had also mentioned in my cv that superoxide dismutase and this superoxide dismutase has a lot of implication in terms of uh, avoiding fall of the hair graying of the hair in terms of extending shelf life in terms of delaying the aging all those things are because of this enzyme now this plant the beauty of this plant was that this enzyme in this plant can tolerate autoclaving and for the student autoclaving means that you can heat the thing you like pressure cooker right like you can heat the things at 121 degrees celsius for 15 minute and in spite of that protein does not get denatured bachcho ko ye pata hona chahiye ki jab aap protein ko garam karte hain to denature ho jata hai jaisa aap ande ko ubalte hain na तो अंडा एकदम पहले एकदम लूज रहता है लेकिन जब आप अंडे को उबालते हैं तो क्या होता है अंडा एकदम टाइट हो जाता है क्योंकि आपका प्रोटीन कोगुलेट कर जाता है प्रोटीन डिनेचर कर जाता है ये आप सबको पता है ये जनरल प्रॉपर्टी है लेकिन इस प्लांट की खासियत ये थी कि इसके अंदर आप इसको हीट कर दीजिए ये प्रोटीन डिनेचर नहीं होता है अगर हम इंडस्ट्री को बताते कि हमारे पास ऐसा पौधा है और ऐसा प्लांट है वो कल को लाहौल स्पीति में जाते सारे प्लांट हमारे उखाड़ के ले आते हैं हमारी बायोडाइवर्सिटी खराब होती अब यहाँ पे बायोटेक्नोलॉजी के से हमने क्या किया वी आइडेंटिफाई दैट पार्ट ऑफ द डीएनए विच मेक्स दैट पर्टिकुलर एंजाइम और उसको हमने उस पौधे से निकाला इस काम में कितने पौधे लगे हमारे पांच ग्राम पत्ती लग गई दस ग्राम पत्ती लग गई राइट वी डिड नॉट डिस्टर्ब द नेचर एट ऑल अब उस जीन को लेके हमने बैक्टीरिया में डाल दिया नौ बैक्टीरिया में डालने के बाद आप जितना मर्जी चाहें आप उसको बना सकते हैं तो आज हमारे पास टेक्नोलॉजी है कि आज आप रात को डालिए तीन हजार लीटर के बायो रिएक्टर में डालिए अगले दिन आपको 400 ग्राम प्रोटीन चाहिए 500 ग्राम प्रोटीन चाहिए सारा तैयार हो जाता है तो आपको नेचर में जाने की जरूरत नहीं है यू कंजर्व योर बायोडाइवर्सिटी दिस ए वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल तो बच्चों को थोड़ा अंदाज रहना चाहिए फिर हमने उस एंजाइम में कुछ चेंज भी किए क्योंकि हमने नेचर में लिया था हमने कुछ उसको चेंज भी किया बायोटेक्नोलॉजी से तो हमने उस एंजाइम की और काइनेटिक प्रॉपर्टी बदल डाली तो उससे और ज्यादा फायदा हो गया उससे अब इसमें क्या हुआ हमने एक कंपनी को जब हमने ये एक कंपनी है फाइटो बायोटेक इसको हमने एंजाइम दिया अब देखिए इस आदमी ने अपना पूरा बिजनेस इस एंजाइम के आधार पर शुरू किया 
अब इस आदमी को इस एंजाइम को लेने के लिए इस पौधे के पास इस पहाड़ पे जाने की जरूरत नहीं है उसको हमने टेक्नोलॉजी ऐसी दे दी कि जैसे दही का जामन है रात को आप दही में दूध में डालिए अगले दिन आपके पास खूब सारा दही तैयार हो जाता है सो जस्ट लाइक दैट ये इसमें भी वही टेक्नोलॉजी है हमने बैक्टीरिया के अंदर जीन डाला अगले दिन सवेरे आपने उसको एक राइट राइट मीडियम में डाला और अगले दिन आपके पास खूब सारा एंजाइम तैयार हो गया और ये इसके आधार पे उसने अपनी इंडस्ट्री भी शुरू कर दी तो बच्चों को ये मैं बताना चाह रहा था कि आप बायोटेक्नोलॉजी से एक तरफ आप बायोडाइवर्सिटी भी बचाइए इंटरप्रीनरशिप भी डेवलप करिए और चूंकि इस एंजाइम का सोसाइटल यूज है तो सोसाइटी को भी फायदा है ये फायदा है अगला मैं आपको एक एग्जाम्पल बताना चाहता हूँ खासकर वो जो बच्चे गए थे जो मैंने आपको पहले फोटो दिखाया था वो जो ग्लेशियर में से बच्चे अपना सैंपल ले रहे थे पानी में से सैंपल ले रहे थे वहां से उनको एक बड़ा अच्छा एंजाइम मिला एस्पार्जिनेस अब इन्होंने उस एंजाइम के डीएनए में थोड़ा सा बदलाव किया और उस बदलाव करने का क्या फर्क पड़ा कि आज हमारे पास जो एंजाइम है वो ऐसा एंजाइम है जो जितने भी मार्केट में एंजाइम है उनसे बहुत अच्छा है और इस एंजाइम का कहाँ यूज होता है आपका जैसे कैंसर बच्चों के अंदर पेनक्रियाटिक कैंसर होता है उसको ट्रीट करने में इस एंजाइम का यूज है मैं इसकी मैकेनिज्म पूरी नहीं बताऊंगा वरना उसमें बहुत ज्यादा कंफ्यूजन हो सकता है लेकिन एक मोटे तौर पे मैं ये बताऊंगा कि इस एंजाइम का प्रयोग होता है कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट के अंदर मार्केट में जितने एंजाइम थे उनमें कमी थी कि उनमें एक एक्टिविटी और होती है तो हमने बायोटेक्नोलॉजी से वो एक्टिविटी भी दूर कर दी ठीक है बच्चों के लिए खासकर जानने के लिए बड़ा जरूरी है और ये हमारा बहुत अच्छा एक एंजाइम तैयार हो अब हमें जब भी चाहिए हमें अब नेचर जाने की जरूरत नहीं है अब हमारे लैब में आ गया वो एंजाइम और लैब से हम जितना चाहें उसको बना सकते हैं इसकी एक यूटिलिटी और है इस एंजाइम की आजकल आप देखते हैं सब बच्चे चिप्स खाते हैं जितने दुनिया भर के चिप्स हैं और जब भी आप आलू को काट के सीधे तलते हैं तेल के अंदर तो एक कंपाउंड बनता है एक्ट्रोलमाइट जो कार्सिनोजेनिक होता है और उस एक्ट्रोलमाइट बनने की वजह होती है कि एक जो अमीनो एसिड होता है एस्पार्जीन ये ग्लूकोज के साथ मिलता है और 120 डिग्री पे मिलके एक्रलमाइड बनाता है तो सब बच्चों एक तरफ ध्यान रखिए जब भी आप चिप्स बनाएं और अगर वो चिप्स वो है जो मार्केट में मिलता है तो उसमें एक्रलमाइड की मात्रा बहुत ज्यादा होती है और जो कार्सिनोजेनिक होता है तो इसलिए हम ये रिकमेंड करते हैं कि जब भी चिप्स बनाए पहले आलू को काट के पानी से धो लीजिए और उसके बाद जब वो चिप्स को अगर आप तलेंगे तो एक्रलमाइड फॉर्मेशन कम से कम होगा और अगर उसके अंदर हम ये एंजाइम डाल देते हैं एस्पार्जिनेस जो मैंने बताया तो एक्रामाइट फॉर्मेशन एकदम ही खत्म हो जाएगा एक ये बड़ी अच्छी बात है तो ये एंजाइम की इतनी यूटिलिटी है और ये एंजाइम क्यों पॉसिबल हो पाया क्योंकि हमारे पास बायोटेक्नोलॉजी मीन्स है हम डीएनए का पीस लेते हैं उसको डिजायर्ड जगह डालते हैं और उसको क्लोन करके आगे बढ़ाते हैं और ये देखिए इससे इंटरप्रीनरशिप भी डेवलप हो रही है इससे हमारे बच जो जनसंख्या है हमारी सोसाइटी है उसको भी फायदा हो रहा है ये एडवांटेज जब जैसे इसमें मैंने फ्रेंच फ्राइज का भी एग्जांपल लिया फ्रेंच फ्राइज के साथ भी यही प्रॉब्लम है तो वन हैज टू बी वेरी केयरफुल वाइल डीलिंग विद सच रेडी टू ईट फूड्स एट टाइम्स एंड हियर बायोटेक्नोलॉजी कैन बी वेरी वेरी यूजफुल हियर आई एम गिविंग यू वन एग्जाम्पल दैट वी हैड आइडेंटिफाइड वन बैक्टीरिया दिस बैक्टीरिया कैन मेक लॉट ऑफ बायोडिग्रेडेबल प्लास्टिक so we modified a bit of gene but because what we wanted while the bacteria should make this biodegradable plastic ye sath mein kuch aur molecule bhi bana le jisse ki aapka jo plastic ka paisa hai wo sasta se sasta ho kyunki plastic aap bahut mehangi afford nahi kar sakte hain to humne iske gene ke andar thoda parivartan kiya ab ye biodegradable plastic ki technology hamare paas hai aur इसके साथ साथ एक मॉलिक्यूल बनाने की टेक्नोलॉजी भी हमारे पास है तो बायोटेक्नोलॉजी से हम इन दोनों चीजों को हम साथ साथ लेके आगे बढ़ सकते हैं सो दैट इज वन आइडिया एंड अगेन इट लीड्स टू इंटरप्रीनरशिप डेवलपमेंट एंड थिंग्स ऑफ दैट स्टफ सो दैट दैट इज द एडवांटेज एंड अगेन हियर बायोडाइवर्सिटी यू सी इफ यू गो अराउंड एंड सी द बायोडाइवर्सिटी इट हैज लॉट मेनी सच थिंग्स विच कैन रियली बेनिफिट यू एक मैं आपको और एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ ये चाय में आप देखते हैं ना जो आप चाय पीते हैं आप कहते हैं कड़क चाय है चाय में जो ब्राउन कलर आता है निकल के जो ब्लैक टीम में वो एक कंपाउंड की वजह से आता है जिसका नाम होता है थिया फ्लेविंस और थिया रुबिजेंस और ये जो एंजाइम और ये ये जो मॉलिक्यूल बनाने के लिए एक एंजाइम होता है जिसको हम पॉलीफिनोल ऑक्सीडेज कहते हैं 
आप देखिए जब आप सेब काटते हैं ना तो सेब भूरे रंग का हो जाता है जब आप आलू काटते हैं आलू भूरे रंग का हो जाता है क्यों उसमें एक एंजाइम होता है पॉलीफिनोल ऑक्सीडेज कई लोग कई बार लोग कहते हैं देखो जिसमें आयरन कंटेंट बड़ा ज्यादा है सेब में इसीलिए वो काला पड़ जाता है सेब आयरन कंटेंट का उससे कोई लेना देना नहीं काले पड़ने से काले पड़ने का मतलब है कि उसमें पॉलीफिनोल ऑक्सीडेज एक्टिविटी ज्यादा है जो अंदर पॉलीफिनोल से उनको कंडेंस करके ब्राउन कलर बनाती है तो चाय में भी जो हम ब्राउन कलर पीते हैं ना जो कड़क चाय होती है उसके अंदर पॉलीफिनोल का ऑक्सीडेशन होता है जिसमें ये एंजाइम का एक रोल होता है अच्छा जो पॉलीफिनोल जो इसको हम थिया फ्लेविंस या थिया रिविजन कहते हैं और इनकी काफी इंपॉर्टेंस होती है ये थियोरोपेटिक मॉलिक्यूल्स होते हैं और खासकर अभी हमने कोविड में देखा ये कोविड को बड़े अच्छे इनिबिटर्स होते हैं तो अगर आप चाय पीते हैं तो ये कोविड में मदद करेगा ये हमारे अभी लैब के रिजल्ट हैं आप इसको ये मत सोचिएगा कि कोविड है तो चाय पीते रहो ठीक हो जाओगे लेकिन इट विल सर्टनली हेल्प इट इज ए किलर ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द बैक्टीरिया एंड वायरसेस तो हमने अब लैब में चूंकि हमारे पास ये टेक्नोलॉजी थी हमने एंजाइम से अब हम लैब के अंदर ये थिया फ्लेबिन बनाना शुरू कर सकते हैं तो बच्चों को ये मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि अगर आपके पास बायोटेक्नोलॉजी का ज्ञान है आपके पास वो टूल्स हैं डीएनए का आपको अगर ज्ञान नहीं होता तो आज हम ये सब कुछ नहीं कर पाते ये मैं थोड़ा सा एग्जांपल बता रहा हूँ एक मैं आपको एग्जांपल बता रहा था कि अगर आपको जैसे पौधे को बनाना है कि अगर उसको पानी ना मिले फिर भी वो टॉलरेंट रहे तो मैं आपको यहाँ पे छोटा सा एक उदाहरण दे रहा हूँ कि आप देखिए जो आप सबसे नीचे वाले देखिए जो पौधे हैं जो हरे दिख रहे हैं इसको हमने पानी नहीं दिया था लेकिन ट्रांसजेनिक थे तो ये बिना पानी के भी बढ़िया काम कर रहे हैं और बाकी सारे पौधे मर जाते हैं तो ट्रांसजेनिक का ये ये यूज है इस, इस टेक्नोलॉजी का जैसे आप ये आलू देख रहे हैं ये हमारे कंट्रोल हैं जिसमें हमने ट्रांसजीन नहीं डाला था और जिसमें हमने ट्रांसजीन डाला था देखिए उसमें कोई बीमारी नहीं लगती तो ये डिसीज टॉलरेंस ऐसी चीजें आप कर सकते हैं ये सारे हमारे पब्लिश और पेटेंटेड हैं जो कई जगह अब यूज भी हो रहे हैं ऐसे आउटकम तो आई थॉट आई शेयर सम ऑफ दिस थिंग्स विद आवर स्टूडेंट्स और जो आप भी आप बात कर रहे थे कार्बन फिक्सेशन की भल्ला साहब तो चांस की बात है कि मैंने वो स्लाइड भी रखा हुआ था यहाँ पे बच्चों के साथ शेयर करने के लिए जैसे बच्चे जो भी फोटोसिंथेसिस जब भी पढ़ते हैं तो दो चीज पढ़ते हैं सी थ्री साइकिल और सी फोर साइकिल ये दो चीजें वो बच्चे अक्सर पढ़ते हैं हम लोगों ने एक नया पाथ फिर डिस्कवर किया था ये जो ना C3 था ना C4 था ये C3 और C4 का मिला जुला पाथवे था जो प्लांट ऑपरेट करता है हाई अल्टीट्यूड में जहाँ पे कार्ब जहाँ पे पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑक्सीजन का कम होता है मैं बच्चों को एक बता दूं कि जैसे ही हम पहाड़ों पे ऊपर चढ़ते हैं ऑक्सीजन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड और सारे गैसों का पार्शियल प्रेशर कम होना शुरू हो जाता है इसीलिए जब हम ऊंचाई पे जाते हैं तो हमें कई बार सांस लेने में दिक्कत होती है और सांस लेने में जो हमें दिक्कत वो इसलिए होती है इसलिए नहीं कि ऑक्सीजन कम है पार्शियल प्रेशर कम है तो ऑक्सीजन आपके हीमोग्लोबिन के साथ बाइंड ढंग से नहीं कर पाती है तो आपको ऑक्सीजन की कमी होती है तो इसलिए वहां के लोग लाल होते हैं उनके अंदर हीमोग्लोबिन बढ़ जाता है हम कहते हैं वो बड़े हेल्दी है वो हेल्दी नहीं है वो रिस्पॉन्स है आदमी का लो पार्शियल प्रेशर के लिए कि वहां के लोगों के चेहरे आपको लाल नजर आएंगे क्योंकि ऑक्सीजन उनको कम ऑक्सीजन में काम करना पड़ता है तो हमने कहा पौधों में क्या कोई नई मैकेनिज्म है तो हमने एक नई मैकेनिज्म खोजी थी वहां पे और ये कई जगह पढ़ाई भी जाती है कई यूनिवर्सिटीज वगैरह के अंदर और फिर हमने वो मैकेनिज्म ट्रांसफर करी थी दूसरे प्लांट में अब आप देखिए आखिरी की जो मैंने सबसे नीचे जो स्लाइड के अंदर आखिरी के जो दो रो हैं उसके अंदर आप देखिए कि जो प्लांट कितने मजबूत हैं और जो लेफ्ट हैंड वाली रो है उसमें अंदर प्लांट बहुत कम मजबूत है और ये चूंकि हमने नई मैकेनिज्म डाली थी इनके अंदर फोटोसिंथेसिस रेट करीब 30 परसेंट ज्यादा था 20 से 30 परसेंट और ये कम नाइट्रोजन पे भी काम करती है तो अभी हम आईसीआर के साथ मिलके दूसरे पौधों में मैकेनिज्म ट्रांसफर की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और ऊपर आप देख रहे हैं हमने तीन अलग अलग किस्म के डीएनए के टुकड़े इसके अंदर डाले हैं थ्री पीसेज ऑफ डी फ्रॉम थ्री डिफरेंट सोर्सेज दे वर पुट इन द प्लांट सो जस्ट टू टेल आवर स्टूडेंट दैट इफ यू हैव दिस डी नॉलेज ऑफ डी स्ट्रक्चर You can bring DNA from any source and put it anywhere, and you can make all those changes, right? That is the advantage, and uh, uh, the, that's a, that's what actually we can do using this DNA structure analysis. Now, 
again now last part of this dna application i wanted to tell you you know nowadays of this covid stuff so in covid one of the challenges can you identify some of the inhibitors which can inhibit this covid so hum logo ne apni lab mein kya kiya ki covid ka ek humne wala hissa liya jo spike protein banata hai humne kaha jo covid aur iske andar ek protein hoti hai main protease jisse wajah se ye pura body mein infect karta hai humne kaha jo एम्प्रो प्रोटीन कहते हैं उसको ये कोविड का एक हिस्सा है हमने कहा अगर हमें एम्प्रो के इनिबिटर मिल जाएं तो हम उसको टेस्ट कर सकते हैं तो आप यहाँ पे देख रहे हैं कि हमने कोविड वायरस का एक छोटा सा हिस्सा लिया वो एम्प्रो प्रोटीन को बना रहा है अब हमारे पास सिस्टम है अब हम क्या करते हैं हमारे पास वो प्रोटीन है और उस प्रोटीन के अंदर हम अलग अलग मॉलिक्यूल डाल के देखते हैं कि कौन कौन से मॉलिक्यूल उसको किल कर देते हैं और इसके अंदर हमें दो तीन बहुत अच्छे मिले हैं मॉलिक्यूल जो उसको 90 परसेंट और 99 परसेंट तक उसको किल कर देते हैं कोरोना वायरस को 99 परसेंट तक आजकल उसका भी ह्यूमन पे ट्रायल चल रहा है तो पता चलेगा कि वो कितने ज्यादा इफेक्टिव हैं लेकिन वैसे 99 परसेंट तक हमारे को इनिबिशन मिल गया है हमारी लैब और सी भी हैदराबाद की लैब मिल काम कर रही है इस विषय के ऊपर so that is the advantage if you know the structure of dna these are the some of the things that one can really do and uh, uh, these i think these things may not be that much relevant to the students but one thing i like to share one example of this arnebia euchroma you know um, because uh, biodiversity conservation is always at our heart and anything which hurts biodiversity it really gives us lot of pain tomorrow if we don't have the resource material how shall we survive very simple thing and one such plant we had identified this arnebia euchroma you see this plant is in high demand you know you need around 200 tons per year and we do not have even 1 kg of this plant so from where we are meeting our demand i do not know it's all people are going and harvesting from all over the world so like this there are several plant species apart from arnebia like nardo stack is for example another plant which is almost disappearing so we are developing alternative technologies and here i am showing you one example it's a mixture of dna technology tissue culture and uh, cell culture now we have this technology for example if plant takes 4 to 5 years under field condition to make this red color molecule we can make those things in 25 days and to make these things we don't have to go to the nature again and again we had gone once we had brought some tissues now we just keep on amplifying that tissue that's the advantage of the technologies that i am telling and, uh, and you know and people should really think that science and technology can do so many wonderful things if we use them properly uh, so this was some of the things i wanted to share and at the end of my presentation i wanted to share certain commonality things also which people should be aware and they should be uh, seeing some of the things and one of the thing i thought that people should understand a word known as serendipity serendipity is something very important in science jisme hindi mein jisko hum kehte hain ki kisi aakshmik ghatna dwara upyogi aur apratyashit अन्वेषण करने की क्षमता आप करने जा रहे हैं कुछ और और हो जाता है कुछ और यू नो दिस वर्ड हैज लॉट ऑफ नाइस हिस्ट्री देर वॉज ए बुक एक फेरी टेल थी कि सरनदीप के जो तीन राजकुमारों की कहानी और पुराने जमाने में जो श्रीलंका जिसको हम स्वर्णदीप कहते थे और उसको सरनदीप कहते थे तो वहां की कहानियों में जिक्र है कि वो तीनों राजकुमार कुछ काम करने जाते थे और उनको अचानक ही कुछ नई नई चीज मिलनी शुरू हो जाती थी तो वहां से इस रेंडिपिटी वर्ड का उद्भव हुआ था साइंस में इसकी बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंस है बच्चों मैं सबसे ये कहूंगा कीप योर आईज एंड ईयर ओपन यू गो फॉर समथिंग एल्स एंड यू गेट समथिंग एल्स सो योर ऑब्जर्वेशन पावर हैज टू बी वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग तो सरेंडिपिटी एक ऐसी चीज है आप कुछ देखने जाते हो जैसे आप गेहूं चुन रहे हो हो सकता है आपको गेहूं के अंदर कुछ नई चीज नजर आ जाए तो नई चीज वो नई डिस्कवरी हो सकती है आप उसको इग्नोर ना करें उसको लाइए लैब में टेस्ट करिए और आगे चलिए दूसरा एक मैं ये कहना चाहता हूं कि बैकग्राउंड नॉलेज बहुत आवश्यक है तो बच्चे अपनी जितनी भी किताबें हैं 
they should read it very very well they should have very good background knowledge inquisitive mind is very essential unless they ask some questions it will be very difficult to survive this competitive world and they should be creative thinking they should come out something new main aapko kuch example ek do dunga zyada nahi dunga fir aapke paas right tools bhi hone chahiye aur good timings bhi hone chahiye jaise aap dekhiye jo aapki dna ki jo discovery hui thi usme timing bahut crucial tha right tools bahut crucial the देखिए उसमें फ्रेंकलिन एक लेडी थी जिसने डीएनए का एक्सरे क्रिस्टलोग्राफी किया था उसने सही टाइम पे वो डिस्कवरी को रिलीज नहीं करवाया था जिसका एडवांटेज वाटसन और क्रिक को मिला और उन्होंने डीएनए की डिस्कवरी करी तो टाइमिंग्स बहुत जरूरी है टाइमिंग में कभी हार बंद माने जो टाइम बोला उससे पांच मिनट पहले काम करके दें आप देखिए हमेशा आपको एडवांटेज होगा और मेरा मतलब बैकग्राउंड नॉलेज और तो इसमें कई सारे आपको एग्जाम्पल मिल जाएंगे जिसमें आप देखेंगे कि सारी की सारी चीजें किस तरीके से होती है जैसे मैंने यहाँ पे छोटा सा एग्जांपल रखा है कि ये जो घर में माइक्रोवेव ओवन कैसे इन्वेंट हुआ था एक पर्सी स्पेंसर था एक कंपनी में काम करता था और वो माइक्रोवेव जो रडार सेट थे ना उससे उसके ऊपर काम करता था उसने देखा उसके जेब में कैंडी बार थी जब उसके ऊपर माइक्रोवेव से वो रडार पे काम कर रहा था वो जब भी उसकी जेब में वो कैंडी होती वो पिघल जाती तो उसको लगा कि इसका जरूर इस माइक्रोवेव से कुछ लेना देना है तो फिर वो उसने कहा वाई डोंट आई यूज दिस माइक्रोवेव फॉर कुकिंग पर्पज तो लैब में आया उसने छोटा मोटा काम किया और माइक्रोवेव से उसने एक देखिए आज के दिन हर घर में आपको माइक्रोवेव मिलता है क्रिएटिव थिंकिंग हो गई उसके पास है ना ऑब्जर्वेशन थे क्रिएटिव थिंकिंग थी उसी तरीके से आपने देखा इलेक्ट्रिसिटी में मैग्नेटिज्म की जो डिस्कवरी हुई थी वो उसी तरीके से हुई थी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का चैप्टर था क्लास में पढ़ा रहे थे वो बगल में कंपास पड़ा हुआ था वो जैसी इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पास होती कंपास घूम जाता देन दे सेट कि यार इलेक्ट्रिसिटी में भी मैग्नेटिज्म हो सकता है एंड दैट्स हाउ यू नो ऑल योर मोटर कार एंड एवरीथिंग गॉट इन्वेंटेड बिकॉज थ्रू इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दे नाउ नो दैट इन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी यू आर हैविंग दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रेड तो ये कुछ मैं चीजें आपके साथ शेयर करना चाहता था और एक चीज में अपने जो पुराने राष्ट्रपति जी थे अब्दुल कलाम साहब उनकी मैं कुछ यादें जरूर बताना चाहता हूँ वो हमेशा कहते थे कि आज के दिन में जो भी अपने टीचरों की बदौलत हूँ तो बच्चों अपने टीचरों से जितना सीख सको उनसे सीखना उनके एक टीचर थे जिनको वो हमेशा कहते थे कि उनके शिव सुब्रमण्य अय्यर उनके एक टीचर थे वो उनको एक बार ये सिखा रहे थे कि चिड़ियाएं कैसे उड़ती हैं खोले मैदान में ऐसी क्लास में बैठा थे तो अब्दुल कलाम साहब ने कहा जनाब मेरे को समझ में नहीं आया उसको समुद्र के किनारे ले गए सिखाने के लिए और वहां उन्होंने सिखाया और वो दिन और आज का दिन कहते हैं तब से मेरे अंदर ये भावना जागी दैट आई शुड लर्न यू नो हाउ टू फ्लाई द थिंग्स और देखिए आज आपको पता है ही इज नोन एज द मिसाइल मैन ऑफ द इंडिया तो टीचर्स की ये इंपॉर्टेंस है कई बार हम टीचर्स की इंपॉर्टेंस समझते नहीं है बट आई थिंक टीचर्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और एक चीज मैं सर सी रमन की बात से कहना जरूर बताना चाहूंगा आप जानते हैं कि सर सी रमन को ये इन भारत रत्न भी मिला था और इनको नोबेल प्राइज मिला था फिजिक्स में 1930 में जिसके जिसमें उन्होंने ये बताया था स्केटरिंग ऑफ लाइट के ऊपर इन्होंने काम किया था जिसको आजकल हम रमन इफेक्ट के नाम से जानते हैं लेकिन इन्होंने ये कहा कि मैंने एक किताब पढ़ी थी हरमन हेन होल्स द्वारा सेंसेशन ऑफ टोन कहते हैं कि इस किताब में जो लिखा था कि वॉट साइंटिफिक रिसर्च रियली मैंट and how it could be undertaken कहते कि अगर मैंने किताब नहीं पढ़ी होती तो शायद मैं साइंस में इतना आगे नहीं बढ़ता ये तो यानी किताब अच्छी किताब बच्चों जरूर पढ़िए इंक्लूसिटिव माइंड बाकी सब चीजों के साथ अच्छे टीचरों के अलावा आप अच्छी किताब जरूर पढ़ें और बाद में वो सी वी रमन साहब एक बात और कहते हैं कि देर शुड बी इंटरनल अर्ज हम और आप कितनी बात कह लें लेकिन जब तक आपके अंदर फायर नहीं होगी ना शायद आप उन चीजों को डिलीवर नहीं कर पाएंगे तो इन चीजों पे आप जरूर ध्यान रखें जब भी आगे बढ़े और देखिए क्या पता आप में से कोई इन श्रेणी में शामिल हो सके हमारे देश में भी पांच अपने देश के हैं जिनको नोबेल प्राइज मिल चुका है रविन्द्रनाथ टैगोर साहब हैं सी रमन जी हैं मदर टेरेसा हैं अमृतिया सेन है कैलाश सत्यार्थी हैं फिर आपके हर गोविंद खुराना साहब हैं सुब्रमण्यम चंद्रशेखर हैं वेंकट रामाकृष्णन है जिनको भी रिसेंटली मिला था नोबेल प्राइज क्या पता आप भी श्रेणी में शामिल हो 
हमेशा अपनी सोच को सकारात्मक रखें देखें आप देश के लिए क्या कर सकते हैं और क्या नयापन और नए तरीके से कर सकते हैं मुझे हिमाचल में तीस साल हो गए हैं और एक बार मुझे भेड़ देखने का मौका बड़ा अच्छा लगा और अक्सर भेड़ों में ये होता है कि अकेला आदमी पूरी भेड़ को संभाल लेता है सब भेड़ चाल की अवस्था में रहते हैं एक आध भेड़ होती है जो इधर उधर होती है जिसके लिए आदमी होता है हम अगर इस भेड़ की तरह भेड़ चाल में ना फंसे तो ज्यादा बेहतर है हम कहीं दूर खड़े हों और हम कुछ नया करके दिखाएं वी शुड अवॉइड बींग पार्ट ऑफ दिस होल शिप एंड शिप थिंग्स तो इसमें मैं अब्दुल कलाम जी का एक कुछ शब्द है जिनसे मैं अपना ये भाषण अंत करूंगा वो कहते हैं कि अपने अगल बगल यू फाइंड लिटिल थिंग्स आपको ज्यादा दूर जाने की भी जरूरत नहीं है अगल बगल देखिए एंड टर्न देम इन टू पिलर ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन उनमें उन्हीं में से आप कोई नई चीज आप ढूंढ सकते हैं बशर्ते आप के अंदर एक फायर हो फाइंड ए न्यू फायर एंड फायर विल इग्नाइट न्यू आइडियाज न्यू पर्पज एंड फैकल्टीज अगर आपके अंदर फायर है उससे नया आइडिया आएगा नया पर्पज आएगा नई फैकल्टी आएंगी एंड यू विल अचीव ग्रेटनेस and he says that in the face of determination which is very important the universe come together to enable them to succeed so these were the words of our former president of india who was a missile man of the country also who contributed for the benefit of uh, you know the way today nation is functioning i think we owe a great credit uh, to shri abdul kalam ji also and certainly today's watson crick day whatever we are today i think we owe a lot to him but also we should not forget our indian uh, scientific contribution as well so thank you all so much for uh, listening me for such a long time and thank you so much so this is the, our institute uh, balla sahab and madam if anybody is interested they are most welcome to visit our institute and will be very happy to take them around and i am sure once they come here they would love the place and they will have something new uh, for them to when once they go back thank you so much thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir for such a knowledgeable talk now uh, let's move to question and answer session sure so any questions uh, from so, the participants you uh, so i can I, I i can see something uh, some hands are there uh, who is the gurpal singh or who is tesh pathak to please look into it Uh, I will stop the sharing. Then it will be easier to see who is who is uh, wanting to ask. Good evening, kindly, uh, Anya. Avika Sharda, kindly unmute. Avika, beta, you want to ask something? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Good evening. Uh, I I wanted to ask the full form of RNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Like D, like DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. This is known as ribonucleic acid. Actually, nucleic acid has got two sugars. You know, it has got some sugar, some phosphate group. Why it is known as RNA? Because RNA has got ribo sugar. and dna has has got deoxy ribose sugar so as the name suggests deoxy means <clears throat> one oxygen less right so ribose is a sugar which has got five carbon into it got it now so hamraj ji hamraj ji Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. I want to ask a question about can you change the DNA for like the the letter of the chromosome structure? Can you change the one letter to into another letter? Uh, I I could not get very clear sound from you. Uh, uh, can you please repeat it or write the question so that your sound is not very clear to me? or if anybody has got a clear question anybody else can repeat that question madam mere ko bahut clear nahi sunai de raha tha inka question kuch dna ke upar puchna cha rahe hain hamraj kindly type your 
मेरे को बहुत क्लियर नहीं सुनाई दिया हमराज आप दोबारा चाहे तो दोबारा पूछ सकते हैं सिग्नल मेरे ख्याल शायद कहीं कुछ वीक है जहां से आप बात कर रहे हैं अब यू कैन ट्राई अगेन हेलो हेलो यस यस प्लीज ऑडिबल थोड़ी आवाज अभी भी क्लियर नहीं बट यू मे ट्राई लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन कैच योर क्वेश्चन जैसे हमारा स्ट्रक्चर होता है डीएनए स्ट्रक्चर होता है हाँ जी उसके लेटर्स होते हैं हाँ जी क्या हम उस लेटर को जैसे किसी लेटर कोई शॉर्ट आट है उसका लेटर की उसके शॉर्ट जीन्स है वो हाँ। हम उसका आट कर कोई न्यू लेटर ऐड कर सके ताकि वो टॉल प्लांट बन जाए बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं आप आ, इसमें कई सारे ऐसे एग्जांपल्स हैं अब मैं टॉलनेस को तो नहीं कह सकता देखिए जब भी आप कोई लेटर चेंज करते हैं इसमें दो चीजें जरूरी हैं आपको जैसे जो ट्रेड चाहिए जैसे आप कह रहे हैं कि आपको टॉल प्लांट बनाना अभी एक हाइपोथेटिकल सिचुएशन लेते हैं ठीक है ना अगर आपको टॉल प्लांट बनाना है तो आपके पास पहले थोड़ा एक मैं हमेशा कहता हूँ थोड़ा बैकग्राउंड नॉलेज ये अगर है कि एक्स वाई जेड की वजह से टॉलनेस आती है तो आप पूरा एक्स वाई जेड को वहां पे लेकर आ सकते हैं आप लेटर के अंदर एक नया लेटर पूरा डाल सकते हैं चेंज कर सकते हैं और आप काट के छोटा भी कर सकते हैं ठीक है ना आप जो बस इसमें जरूर अब आपको ये है ना कि जैसे अगर आपको वहां पे लेटर कौन से लिखने इंपॉर्टेंट वो है जो चार लेटर हैं वो चार लेटर लिखने कौन से हैं वो इम्पोर्टेंट है वरना आप कर सकते हैं बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं लेकिन आपको अगर ये पता हो कि चार लेटर वो कौन से हैं जिसकी वजह से पेड़ में लंबाई बढ़ती है तो आप उन लेटर को दोबारा लेकर आके काट के वहां पे लगा सकते हैं उसमें कोई दिक्कत की बात नहीं है इसमें जब भी हम हमराज ऐसा कोई भी हम एक्सपेरिमेंट करते हैं ना जैसे हम कहते हैं कि भाई हमको लाल फूल से सफेद बनाना है बड़े पौधे को छोटा बनाना है पौधे के अंदर हमें बीमारी कम करनी है ठीक है तो हमें ये पता होना चाहिए कि जिन पौधों में बीमारी नहीं आती उनका लेटर का सीक्वेंस क्या है वही लेटर हम फिर दूसरे पौधे जिसके अंदर वो बीमारी आती है उन पौधों में डाल डाल देते हैं समझ गए बात को चेंज पॉसिबल है आपको बस पता होना चाहिए कि किस लेटर की वजह से वो ट्रेड बदलता है आपको जैसी वो पता चल जाए आप उस लेटर को ले आइए वो ट्रेड बदल जाएगा ठीक है हमराज एनी क्वेश्चन सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन सर श्योर सर श्योर प्लीज थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर द एक्सट्रॉर्डनरी एंड इंस्पिरेशनल प्रेजेंटेशन सर जस्ट आई वांट यू टू थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन दिस क्रिस्पर टेक्नोलॉजी बिकॉज आई थिंक दिस इज द रीसेंट डेवलपमेंट इन बायोटेक्नोलॉजी Yes, and also it fixed the uh, Nobel Prize recently. Uh, yes, I would like you to throw a light on CRISPR technology. Also, second uh, uh, information which I need from you is now yes. with this digital sequence information uh, in place, companies yes. are not uh, they don't need to access a biological resource for producing a product. They need to only to have the digital sequence information, and with that they start producing the product. now the biological yes. diversity act actually uh, uh, has an obligation on all the companies to pay a benefit sharing to the communities which actually su support the supply of these uh, resources now with this dsi in place there is a uh, there is a lot of demand from the western countries that benefit sharing should not be imposed on companies using the dsi i would like to know your personal views on that these are the two very simple thank you uh, i think uh, that's how i think first let me go to that uh, crispr thing that you wanted to understand see crispr cas it is normally oh known as crispr cas9 right when we having it and it's a very specific 
वेरी एफिशिएंट एंड आई वुड से दैट वेरी वर्सेटाइल जीन एडिटिंग टेक्नोलॉजी राइट एंड वेरी वेरी रिसेंटली यू नो दिस इज नोन एज और क्या है लला uh, I think there is some some mic is open somewhere so somebody can mute their mic which is open so crispr is basically a acronym for clustered regularly interspaced uh, short palindromic repeats and uh, this is basically you know why actually this was a discovered you know people were wondering how bacteria protect themselves against viruses right that was the whole thing when people were doing this study then they realized that uh, uh, they have a specific sequences which are clustered very regularly and there are interspaced and there are palindromic repeats palindromic means like you know a ta ta you know you read from both the sides and comes the same so they have got this palindromic sequences so advantage of crispr cas is then there is a protein known as cas9 protein right so basically it's a protein which is a scissor and then you have a specific sequence so what happens is once you talk of this crispr cas then you cut uh, the dna very very precisely so uh, because of that you can remove that piece of dna that you are interested in very precisely that's the advantage of this crispr cas because you have palindromic sequences which are regularly spaced you have a scissors which just goes and bind there so you can remove any piece whatsoever is there and now this what is the use of this technology let me give you an example what we are doing it in our institute also like for example in uh, apple uh, sorry in tea we want to make green tea we don't want to make uh, black tea so what we do what we do we do we would like to silence polyphenol oxidase gene right and to knock down that gene what we will do is we go to that specific part of that gene which is responsible for activity we using crispr cas we cut down that piece of um, um, nucleic acid so that our gene is inactive so what will happen now we have a t we which does not have polyphenol oxidase so the tea which will be formed it will be green tea right so that's the advantage of this technology now you ask about this access benefit sharing i think uh, i very strongly believe and i am believer that our biodiversity is very 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 important thing and we cannot afford at any cost you know particularly when people are going to use it for commercial purpose we have to encourage that but not at the cost of local guys suppose there is a knowledge which people, for example i give you an example we go to kaza area is this pangi area and we cross saach pass you there is a dhaba and that dhaba man makes a chutney so even anybody who, who's having a gastric trouble they eat that chutney and they are all all okay then he told us that he uses a particular plant species for making that chutney and now that is a traditional knowledge now if we use make use of that knowledge without giving credit to the local inhabitants i think that will be criminal so i think some money should be passed on to our uh, uh, you know those guys and there should be some laws i think laws we already have in place for access benefit sharing and you are right that in this digital world it is very very difficult to impose some of those things but we need to evolve some of Those, some of those conditions we have no other option no sir the companies need they are not uh, accessing the resources physically they are okay. having the nucleotide sequence of a particular resource know. and then they are they are making the product without physically accessing the resource so they yeah, claim yeah. that why we should give the benefit share and yes. and sir actually uh, uh, yes i think and then now i now, now now i got your now i got sir actually sir uh, 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 we have to take a balanced view on that because yes uh, india has not taken a position on that uh, because yes. we don't know how how much our institutions uh, depend on dsi digital sequence information technology there should not be a yes. situation where india pays more uh, on taking a decision that dsi also should fall under the abs mechanism that is what yes. i was asking
So, Western yeah, countries... So I think, but because I think is that digital information wise, if they use our traditional knowledge, I think that part they should certainly pay. They are not accessing yes. the resource, but they are accessing our knowledge. Correct. But what about the resource, sir? The resource? A uh, uh, resource that they, because, you know, they have not used, if X, Y, Z has done the sequencing, because somebody yeah. must have done the sequencing, then yeah. only they are able to get that whole piece of sequence, right? Okay. Uh, so, the person who has done sequencing, he does own that uh, particular thing. Na? Although he has not accessed the resources, but he has accessed the real knowledge. He has accessed our whole knowledge. For example, somebody says, that I use IHBT, stevia uh, gene sequences, and I'm making stevia without attributing us. And if it was our intervention, there should be, unless it is open, if somebody has done it in open resource, nobody can help it. But if you have protected it, then you, you need to give that benefit to that person. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's a very, very uh, interesting situation. And I seriously think that yes we need to start raising this very important issue especially with respect to abs and i'm sure we need to respond to this and laws i'm sure would evolve in due course of time to respond to these kind of things for yes, example exactly. we have responded to there are certain things which are called ethical and there are certain things which are called unethical in uh, like in medical technology so yeah. I think it's a similar kind of a situation and uh, there should be more debate which should come up on these kind of things. That's true. That's true. I fully agree. Anna. Any other questions? Probably Kamaljeet wants to ask a question. With the, will uh, the controller unmute her? Shruti Kalia, uh, Kalia is there. Yes, she Shruti, please. Please unmute her and then you unmute Kamalji. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Sir, in one of these slides, you mentioned about polyphenol oxidase enzyme, which is responsible for the brown color in potatoes and the apples and in the, and in the black tea also. Sir, I'm cu quite curious about the functioning of this enzyme. Th does this enzyme works at normal room temperature or it, it works inside, uh, once you mentioned that uh, it works at 102 degrees Celsius, something like that. Okay. See, this enzyme is a very interesting enzyme. Why plant has this enzyme? Because whenever there is an insect infection, for example, suppose some insect is coming, and piercing the potato or any such plant material. Then this enzyme, what it does, it makes those uh, polyphenolic products, right? That uh, condensed product, which are very toxic to the in insect. And that's how the plant protects itself, right? Uh, and this enzyme is functional at room temperature. It can function right from 10 degrees Celsius to say 40 degrees Celsius very effectively. Some enzymes can have optimized 30 degrees Celsius. Some enzyme can have optimized 25 degrees Celsius. Optima means where the activity is maximum. Although they will have a broad functional range, right from 10 to 30 degrees, 40 degrees Celsius in general. Some enzyme can show activity up to 70 degrees Celsius also. So depending upon from where we are taking that enzyme, uh, at that 102 degrees Celsius, which I was mentioning, that was not for this polyphenol oxidase, that was for superoxide dismutase that can function up to 120 degrees Celsius. And it uh, so we worked out the reason, if you want to understand why these uh, uh, reasons are there, why some enzymes are so active at high, te high temperature. So the answer lies in their amino acid sequences. They have such amino acid sequence, which, them, which make them very, very compact structure. So even if you heat it, they do not disrupt their tertiary structure. And some of them, even if they disrupt their structure, they maintain the activity at the active site. So mechan different mechanisms are there for different uh, enzymes. Uh, you got your answer, Shruti? 
Yes, sir. I got that, sir. Uh, you said that uh, the brown color which is present on the potatoes and on the apples that is carcinogenic. No, no, no. Uh, that color is not carcinogenic. A uh, carcinogenicity is because of uh, that is a different scenario. What happens is once you cut potato and do deep frying the if you do deep frying of potatoes, right? If you do deep frying of potato, then there is formation of acrylamide because potato has got a free amino acid known as aspargine. It has got free glucose. This glucose and aspargine at high temperature, they make a molecule known as aspargine, aspar uh, this acrylamide, and which is toxic and which is carcinogen, right? Here, enzyme has no role. Here, only high temperature has a role. Uh, there the as enzyme known as asparginase has a role. Like if you cut that potato and you dip in a solution which is having asparginase enzyme, right? That asparginase will ensure that there is no that aspargine is removed, and because of removal of that aspargine, uh, there is no formation of acrylamide. Got it, uh, Shruti? So that's yes, a different sir, yes. of yeah. So whenever you deep fry the potato, then this acrylamide formation takes place, which is carcinogen. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. There's another query from Rajan Preet. Rajan Preet. Yes, Rajan Preet. Rajan Preet, you need to unmute yourself. No, no, sir. I have no question. Okay. okay. Your okay. hand was raised, so please. Um, so bye, Mister. Looks like. Anybody else? Sir, one, 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 one more question, sir, from my side. During your presentation, you yes. had informed that uh, coronavirus being an RNA virus, this correction uh, process becomes difficult. Yes. Uh, in the past, also we had RNA virus linked diseases. That's uh, right. And then it was controlled. Uh, but yes. same thing, why it is not uh, possible for Corona, sir? Why we are yes. having a problem for COVID only? Any, uh, any yes. idea on that, sir? I, I think that's a, there are multiple reasons for this coronavirus. One of the reasons is that its binding site to human is that ACE2 re receptors, they are very prominent. They are everywhere, like in our kidney, in our lungs, in our heart. Therefore, moment this virus goes and this ACE2 receptor and it has got this spike protein. So that protein just goes, just, just opens the door of the lungs, opens the door of the heart and everywhere this receptor, it's the one of the major thing here is its receptivity is very high because it has selected a spot in the human body where receptivity rate is so high. And more, more, you, more any virus replicates, more chances of error uh, development are there. And this virus has become such a replicative virus, just keeps on replicating. And so therefore, so many mutations are happening. And now, since there are one or two mutations, if they recombine, then that triple mutation starts coming. That, that is yet another reason. So th the, probably that is one of the major reasons why this has, virus has become so notorious. Exactly. exactly yes. Very okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, sir. Just you um, have talked about the dead addict gene technology. I have in the previous question I have just asked about the changing the traits of a feature like the short yes. taller yes. tree. Yes. Just want to ask, like human beings, can we add a new feature in human beings by adding some ladder, some feature, some sequence, anything? Uh, uh, yes. In in human beings, what efforts are going on, particularly for treating a particular disease condition, right? This is known as gene therapy. So suppose there is a piece of DNA. Uh, which is overexpressing and which is causing a lot of production of a protein which is undesirable, then using that gene therapy, you can put that gene 
and you can correct that sequence. So some gene correction efforts right now have started, although gene therapy has started long back. Now, in terms of correcting those sequencing using CRISPR-Cras is now also being tried. So let's see, it will take some time and uh, not so easy in human beings. There are several ethical issues also whenever we come and, uh, and talking with the human beings. So ethical issues are very, very high because people should not use misuse this technology. Just now, for example, Justin Mohanji asked a very pertinent question. You know, somebody has a gene sequence and they are misutilizing this gene sequence without giving any credit to the person from there they stole from where they picked up that gene sequence. So uh, protecting our gene sequence at times become very, very important. So those are ethical issues. In human being, actually, ethical issues are very strong. Uh, you are growing up. Therefore, this, at this point, you should also consider very seriously that whenever we take such things in terms of gene alteration in human beings, lot many ethical issues crop up. So ethically, we should be strong enough. Uh, so if we are dealing with the diseases, right, and uh, we are very sure that one particular sequence will correct it, then there are methods and lots of formalities are needed. But in human beings, certainly it will take some more time before we reach that stage. In case of human being, ethical issues become very, very important, uh, Amraj. Clear? Sir, uh, there is one query in the chat box. Uh, Shereen, uh, from Shereen, uh, she okay. wants to ask, is it possible for a gene descriptor by antibiotic resistance cassette to still produce functional protein? Uh, is it possible for a gene descriptor by antibiotic resistant cassette? Uh, to, yes. can, can, is Shereen there? Sharin, what actually she means by that? Uh, if, if, if you disrupt a gene, if you disrupt a gene and that disruption is in the in that portion of the gene which is responsible for activity, then certainly that gene will not be functional, right? If you do that mutation or disruption where functionality is not affected, then certainly gene will be functional, correct? If you already disrupted that gene, which affects the functionality, because you know most of the genes, the moment you make one alteration or delete or alter or add, there is change in the functionality. And uh, moment you disrupt it, once it is non-functional, then you have to revert back to make it functional. Got it, Shirin? Shirin, you, you can, can unmute yourself. Yeah, I think I got a message from Shirin. Yeah, okay, sir. Okay. Nimrat now, Kaur. Nevrat Kaur. Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, sir, can uh, you highlight the few points against the vaccination of the COVID-19? Uh, COVID vaccination? Against the vaccination? Yes. <laughs> See, vaccination is one thing which will always protect you. One thing is very, very sure. See, what happens moment you put vaccination, your body always gives polyclonal antibodies. Your body never gives monoclones antibody. Polyclonal means if something related to that virus comes in the body, Again, that the, your mechanism will be effective, right? That's the advantage. So only problem now will happen with this triple mutant. If it is immune escaper, and if our antibody cannot recognize that, so again, it is not anything against antibody, I would say. It's only a, then you need to have a different type of um, um, dose to be taken for that particular virus, right? But right now, whatever vaccine that we are having, they are quite okay. I think whether you take a COVID shield or any other uh, vaccine, they are quite okay. Um, here, chances of an reinfection might be there, but disease certainly will not be there. Incidence, suppose 
you can be a, still a covid positive even after having the vaccination right but then disease incidence will not be up to that extent that you know it has gone to your lungs and it has gone to your heart or kidney chances are the 99% or 98% chances are there that those organs will be protected you can be positive and then after a while you will be negative so you will get lot of protection if you are having this vaccination only if some mutant comes and uh, which is, which are uh, immuno escapers Uh, which do not recognize the antibody, then you need to have a different set of antibody. That's what I would say. I But as of know. today, I think it's effective. It's not uh, that you know uh, we should sir, go for vaccination. Thank you so much, sir. But I request that uh, to the science city that uh, uh, Dr. San Sanjay Kumar should be again and again uh, like in such a webinars. Sure, we will do that. it was too yeah. effective sir there is no words to explain that uh, how, how we understand this topic today so maybe we will request you to speak specifically on this subject if sure. possible for you sure 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 sir sometimes yes, so we will very soon organize that sure. once again because sure. we are already in the process of doing an integrated program for um, with respect to covid okay okay so we are uh, trying to develop some um, short plays and sure. the state government has also asked us they have come up with some jingles and also we are going to display all that some of that we have already displayed on our website all so right all right the pm has sent some messages which we are displaying so probably we will as a part of that we can take this and integrate it Dr Grover is listening to me Dr Grover will do an integrated web series on covid let's plan for that as soon as possible and uh, sir i would like to ask a question sure sure sure, sure, sure ma'am sure questions are over um my question relates to the controversy around bt cotton as well yes. as bt brinjal I mean, yes, yes. one is an edible crop, and other is a non-edible thing. But for BT yes. cotton also, there is a yes. lot of resistance, especially now. Initial results were very good. Yes. Three four years, uh, we we are told that the boll worm has developed resistance. Yes. So I would like your comments on that. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I think because BT cotton is such an area, uh, which is certainly <laughs> very very. very close to us also see what happens madam uh, as you are understand you know this bt this is bacillus uh, thuringiensis right and uh, they can uh, they can produce as crystal which has insecticidal protein right and which which we call them as cry protein crystal protein because they are crystal protein and they are they are insecticidal in nature and effective in killing several uh caterpillars pest of coat, cotton is it right what happens is if you put 100% everywhere uh, this bt cotton bt cotton now there is always in ecosystem there is a balance between uh, uh, insect resistance and the insect incidence first year all the caterpillars die second year it was effective now they also change their receptors this uh, herbivores they also keep on changing their receptor therefore initially cry 1 was effective cry 2 became effective cry 3 became effective sometimes you need to give a combination of that so herbivore is also uh, altering itself suppose you develop a strategy where you allow some of those caterpillars to grow you do not impose a very strong this is a, a strategy i would say strategy wise right suppose you make a field where some of the herbivores are enjoying nicely uh, they do not have a pressure of alteration they do not have a pressure to change their receptors probably they will remain effective for a longer period but if you put a very strong restriction yes no only cry protein and none of you will be allowed and you have not provided them as an alternative means to eat something they will certainly do some evolution they will change their receptors 
and therefore after a while they become ineffective because there is already al already a change in their receptor systems like you know our uh, uh, all uh, host parasite relationship are always like that uh, they are very very um, proactive in terms of altering therefore either you adopt a multi pronged approach for example recently nbri what they did they got one uh, in protein from uh, fern and that protein is very very toxic and for which there is very difficult to develop a uh, right now as on today very difficult to develop a you know alteration for that parasite um, against that in uh, against that insecticidal protein so i feel in this uh, bt cotton also the same thing happened uh, there was a lot of pressure on this uh, parasite and it just did some mutation it did uh, some made in uh, changes in the receptor and it, it again become these those bt cotton became very susceptible mm -hmm. bt brinjal i would say that i think since india has not yet taken a very clear stand in terms of uh, transgenics mm -hmm. bangladesh on the contrary they took a stand you see all the bt brinjal in bangladesh <laughs> they have no insect incidence so all the bangladeshi brinjals are they, they are also consuming it they, they say that we are eating it and it's safe for human being after eating it that crystal protein dies off and it's all fine with us so it all depends upon you know the which stand the country takes and usa see how many uh, transgenic events are there which are there in the market uh, in europe is deadly against but us gives an option to its citizen and its consumers Yes. And because every product is marked every product is marked that's right every product is marked and uh, the individual has the option whether you yes. want to take a transgenic crop or you don't no. want to take yes it. so and uh, and we have not matured to that situation as yet yes i remember madam when we developed this brassica cotton uh, brassica uh, transgenic brassica till to date we had all the events all the data came up very nicely that there is absolutely no harm to human beings using brassica until to date we could not get clearance for using gm brassica in this country mm -hmm. if we had got that uh, clearances although dbt says that uh, it's fine but uh, i think at final stage something happens and nothing no clearance is yet given for general human consumption but you are right i think till we take such a stand we actually educate all our society that this is transgenic this is non transgenic and we maintain ethics again the problem comes there that we, then we will label transgenic non transgenic everything will go here and there and lot of confusion will take place that's where i think we are scared of our consumer and, and our uh, relationship with our um, vendors they really mess up everything i agree i agree actually madam more more than the uh, producers say government is more concerned on the consumer, consumer. on the farmers mm -hmm. because uh, they, there should not be a situation where uh, farmers use a transgenic crop like cotton or uh, brinjal and then every time because normally the farmers keep some seeds for the next cropping but uh, when it comes to uh, bt yeah. uh, that is transgenic uh, yeah. crops yeah. the farmers will be compelled to buy again and again from the uh, companies so uh, that is yet that, another uh, that is that is, that is the word dimension to that there's yet another dimension yes i agree i agree and that, that, that's where you know the whole problem arises now yes. farmer and says i have my own seeds i can use it but next yeah. time onwards he will have no option and the fear is sir that uh, once you use a, a transgenic uh, crop then the native varieties will slowly get extinct they, right. they will not be used actually That's so right. uh, then you have to compulsorily depend on a, a multinational company which produces this transgenic uh, crop yes so the farmers rights come into that the... right yes. yes yes yeah so if there are no other now oh, it's time to wind up the program now i request uh, dr rajesh grover director science city to give vote of thanks
Dr. Grover, we can't hear you. Yes. We still can't hear you. There is some technical issue, I think. <laughs> So, uh, if that doesn't work, I would take the pleasure of proposing a vote of thanks. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful talk, and uh, it is also uh, evident from the amount of questions which our students had. Some of these students were from uh, colleges as well, so perhaps they understood also your talk in a better manner. Um, I'm indeed extremely, extremely grateful to you, Dr. Sanjay Kumar, for accepting our invitation and for speaking at the occasion. And just as requested by some of the participants, we will certainly invite you again to speak on this subject as well as on related subjects. Uh, I am extremely grateful to you for sparing your time for coming here. And thank you very much for that. I'm also extremely grateful to Mr. J. Justin Mohan. Uh, I know he is a very, very busy person, but he found time to attend this program, to participate. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Justin. Thank you very much for this. We are extremely grateful to you for not only joining this program, but also for enriching our knowledge through all the questions which you asked and all the discussions which took place. Thank you very much. I also take this opportunity to thank all the teachers who are there, the students who are with us for uh, enriching this platform by joining us here. Thank you very much. I thank my director because he is the one who organizes everything on my behalf. I just request him to do that. I'm extremely grateful to you, uh, Dr. Grover. I know I have taken up your role here, um, but indeed it's a proud privilege for me to be able to propose this. Thanks. So thank you, Dr. Grover, for this. And thank you, Dr. Bhalla. Thank you, uh, Engineer Ritesh Patak, who is the technical man behind all this. And thank you, everybody who has been here with us today and my Science City team, um, and Dr. Sanjay Kumar, let me tell you that at Science City, we work on, uh, we work 27 days a week. So although the Science City is presently closed due to the surge in COVID cases, we are closed till the 30th of um, April, um, which is primarily we are closed for the general public, but we are otherwise open. But yeah. it is uh, because we are open seven days a week during this closure period, we have kept Sundays off. So everybody is getting a holiday on Sunday, but I am grateful to my staff who chose because we try not to miss any day. So yeah. I'm grateful to my staff who agreed to organize this program on a Sunday as well. Thank you very much. And thank you once again, everybody. It has been a pleasure talking to everybody. It has been a pleasure listening to Dr. Sanjay Kumar. It has been a pleasure having Mr. Justin Mohan here. It has been a pleasure interacting with everybody who had so many questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, Anna. Namaskar, Thank Justin you. Mohanji. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very informative presentation, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar. I'll call you, sir. Thank you.